Thank you. Uh, my name is Hussein, and today I'm excited to announce the launch of Snap Travel. Snap Travel is the fastest and easiest way to book a hotel room. Whether you're a business traveler looking to maximize points, or a vacation traveler looking for the best deal, Snap Travel will help you find the perfect hotel backed by our best price guarantee. So I'm going to jump straight into a live demo. So, oh, there we go. All right, so I'm in Messenger, um, and the first thing I'm going to do is start a new booking through the menu, and I get asked for my travel city and dates. So let's say San Francisco, um, and I'm going to say August 12th to the 14th. Now what it's going to do is it's going to give me an indication of prices during this time so I can set my budget and I'll say $300. And then using the Facebook quick reply buttons, I'm going to select the purpose of my trip. In this case, it's business. And finally, I get asked if I have any room or hotel preferences. So I'm going to say near Union Square and I prefer an SPG property. And I get a response that says, thanks Hussein, give me a few minutes and I'll research all the available options. Now what's going on in the background is that Snap Travel is trying to find me the best hotel given the criteria I've given it. It's looking at hotel reviews, it's looking at location scores, and real-time pricing across hundreds of suppliers to try and pick the best hotel room. Now, in our beta test, we've seen that two to three is the perfect number of options to provide. When you provide one option, the user has nothing to compare it against. When you provide too many options, they get overwhelmed and they don't know what to do. So it looks like I've got some responses here. Um, the first one is the Westin St. Francis, which is $330 a night. I can see it's four to five on TripAdvisor, and I can see pictures of the bedroom, the bathroom, and all the relevant information. It's also given me a non-SPG property because it knows I can save a little bit of money if I stay at a non-SPG property. So for $288 a night, I can stay at the Sir Francis Drake. And again, I can see pictures and reviews. Now, because I said I wanted to stay close to Union Square, it's actually generated a map for me that shows me Union Square and where the hotels are relative to that um, location preference. So um, what are your thoughts on the options above? I'm going to say this looks great. Let's book the West in. All right, so I've asked to book the West in. Um, and it should show up with a book now button. Come on, Wi Fi. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Here we go. So there's the book now button. Um, now, if I was a first-time user, when I clicked on the Book Now button, what would happen is it would take me to a secure credit card form where I could complete my information and complete the booking. Because I'm an existing user, when I click on Book Now, it already has my credit cards on file. So I can simply decide to select between my business credit card and my personal credit card. I'm going to select my business card, and it's going to give me one final confirmation before it charges my Amex. So my Amex will be charged $661. It also tells me I'm going to earn 3,308 SPG points based on the credit card I've selected. So I'll click on Confirm, and in just a few seconds, my hotel room will be booked, and I'm going to get a confirmation number and message right within Facebook Messenger. So I can click here to see the order details and I can see that the Western St. Francis was booked and that my credit card was charged. Pretty awesome, right? Yeah, that's awesome, Hussein. All right, now I'd like to show you guys one more thing, and it's some of the advanced natural language processing that we've been working on. So I'm going to ask for something a little bit more complex, and I'm going to say, need a hotel in Barcelona um, on... New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Uh, I'm going to say by the beach and romantic. All right, so what's happening here is that our natural language processing engine was able to pick up the city, Barcelona, 
It was able to pick up the date, which is New Year's Eve, and it was able to pick up by the beach and romantic. It's also going to infer my budget based on my previous booking, and it remembers that I previously booked an SPG property. So it's going to take all that information, and now it's very quickly going to be able to provide me with the best options using the natural language processing and using my booking history. So you can see that a few um, exciting options will come through. Now, Snap Travel is a half bot, half human service. So what that means is that the natural language processing will do what it can to understand what the user is saying. But if there's ever a message that it can't understand, it gets kicked off to a live human agent. That human agent will then be able to review the message and direct the bot to do the appropriate thing. So you can see I got some cool properties over here in Barcelona. Um, pretty awesome. I wish I was there right now. Um, <laughs> And that's that. Let me know what you think of these properties. I'll think about it. All right. So we are currently live. Today is our launch day. So thank you, uh, wow. VentureBeat, MobileBeat. Yeah. Um, so you can visit us right now. The website is getsnaptravel.com. We're currently live on SMS, Facebook Messenger, and Slack. Um, in, in conjunction with today's launch, we'd also like to announce the closing of our seed round. So we've raised $1.1 million led by LightBank and B Partners. Um, and together, we're going to revolutionize how travel is booked. Thank you. All right, Hussein. And next up, we have Dan Reich, CEO of Troops. Go, Dan. Everybody, oh, use this. Hey, everyone. I'm Dan. I'm the co-founder of Troops. Um, Seattle. OK. Chris is talking about conversational commerce before. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we'll call conversational CRM. Who would have thought that computers would have went from this, the world's first general purpose electronic computer, to this, literally speaking to your computer? How many of you have one of these in here? There's quite a few people. You guys like it? It's pretty epic. Um, and in many ways, we all should have saw this coming, and I think we have. We could thank our movie friends for that. We had C-3PO, R2-D2, helping Luke run around the universe, uh, saving it from his dad. We had Matthew McConaughey in Interstellar with his marine robot TARS, helping him fly through space, occasionally telling him jokes every once in a while. We have Iron Man, right? You know with his buddy robot Jarvis helping him control his home and occasionally taking over his totally autonomous uh, suit. Back in the real world, we have real life Iron Man inventing self-driving, fully autonomous cars, launching rockets into space, landing them back on Earth, and yet back in the office where we spend a third of our lives doing work, we're still using software that looks like this. How many people here have seen software that looks like this before? Tons of fun. <laughs> Yet, this is arguably one of the most important pieces of software in our business. It's our guiding light. It stores critical information on revenue, our customers. It is how we make decisions as a business. And as a salesperson or biz dev person, in the trenches, I need to be focused on the most important functions that are going to yield high output. I can't be worrying about that information or logging it. I need to do my job. I need to be doing this. Closing deals, moving things across the finish line, increasing shareholder value. Uh, and yet, oftentimes, we don't really feel that way. Um, if I'm a person selling new software or if I am a customer uh, success team, 
or account team that is trying to figure out where I can create new upsell opportunities or prevent accounts from churning, or maybe I'm an entrepreneur trying to raise money, or I'm an investor uh, looking for the hottest deals. All these functions are a function of a salesperson or a biz dev person. And again, I need to be focused on the most important function of that job. Instead of being a data monkey, logging information into software that we saw before. We call this the consumerization of the enterprise. And we think the world is moving. And much of the work we're seeing in the consumer space, we think is also going to happen in the enterprise space. So things like the Amazon Echo, I think, reflect well what we're beginning to see pop up in the enterprise space. Things like Siri. I want to know what the score of the sports game was. I want to see specific movies. I simply just ask it a question and get the answer. And in the work world, Slack is doing an exceptional job kind of laying the groundwork for this conversational platform and human behavior to take place. And this is where we're spending most of our time right now at Troops, building on top of this platform to make work easier. So how do we do that at Troops? So now we're going to go through a quick demo of what that looks like. So I get up in the morning, and I show up in the office, and the troop spot is going to tell me, oops. Thank you. So I get up in the morning, I show up in the office, and the troop spot is going to let me know what deals I need to work on. It's going to show me the most important things I should focus on. And in this case, I see that it's been 24 days since I've had any communication or email with Pied Piper. So I'm going to quickly look up information <laughs> on Richard Hendricks. And I'm going to take note to drop him a line. But before I do and start my day, I quickly want to check in with the sales team. So I'm going to pop in the sales channel. And I'm, I'm going to hit up my partner and head of sales, Scott, who's sitting over there somewhere. And I'm going to say, hey, Scott, how are your deals going? And without having to open up another tab or log into a system or changing context, he can quickly respond and show me that information in real time, the place I'm already looking at. And quickly, he decides that he also needs to reach out to Skynet, because it's been 33 days, and finds information on Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I give him some love. Sick. Good luck closing. Smiley emoji. And I continue on. And as I do, an alert goes off in the sales gong channel. And it looks like someone won a deal with Willy Wonka for $55,000. Charlie Sheen is excited. <laughs> so is the team. Everyone's giving lots of love on the emoji buttons. And uh, one of our other teammates raises his hand and says, that was my deal. Team gives him some more love. Scott, as the sales leader, says, great job, Greg. Any takeaways? Yes, sending them a box of chocolate donuts helped. So as you can see, we think making the CRM incredibly conversational not only makes your job easier, we think it makes it a little bit more delightful, which in turn will help everyone's happiness and productivity across the board. And so this is what we believe. We think that there will be a Jarvis for work. We do think that there will be an, artificial, an artificially intelligent assistant in your office helping you get things done. And for the time being at Troops, we're making that a reality by bringing these experiences into Slack, which is the place many people are already doing work. And that's all I got. Thank you. All right, Dan. <laughs> Great job. Next up, Mikhail Yang, co-founder and CEO, ManyChat Pro. Hi, one, two. <clears throat> Let's face it, we all want attention. And our businesses need customers' attention to succeed. And I need my slides to succeed. <laughs> <clears throat> OK. That's much better. <laughs> so, attention slide. Software solutions like MailChimp have made email marketing the killer app for reaching out to your customers. But now the consumer attention is shifting. People are using messaging apps twice as much 
as email apps. They open up messengers over 10 times every day. And now the biggest platforms have opened up their APIs for any developer to build upon. This is the reason why we are all here. It's because everyone knows that you have to use the channels that your audience is using. And today, it is messaging apps. So right now, I want to show you how our company, ManyChat, helps businesses and professionals leverage messaging apps to engage their audiences. So what is ManyChat? ManyChat is a visual bot building platform focused on audience engagement. What that means is we help you do three things. First, we help you create a bot without writing any code. The platform is visual. You just drag and drop, and it works. Second, we help you gather an audience of subscribers. And third, we help you engage that audience in an interactive way. We launched our first product on the Telegram Messenger 11 months ago. And since that time, we've experienced extreme growth. Right now, we power over 150,000 bots on Telegram that send out over 600 million messages every month. And just over a month ago, we launched on Facebook Messenger. And we already power over 2,000 bots there. So let me show you what ManyChat can actually do. So imagine Hillary Clinton. She has over 4 million fans on Facebook. But right now, the only way to interact with those fans is to post on her page. Let's see how ManyChat can help her engage her audience much deeper. So she can start simple. Send out a broadcast like a survey. Do you support gun control? Yes, no undecided. Now, we know from our data that these types of messages get engagement rates ranging from 20 to 60%. Compare that with email, where the average CTR is 1 to 3%. Instantly, Hillary gets hundreds of thousands of people replying to her question. And that is live data about her supporters. And as you can see from this picture, she likes it. <laughs> but that is only the beginning, actually. She can customize a personalized reply for each option. So for example, if a person replies, no, I don't support gun control, she can subscribe that person to an automated sequence of messages that has information about gun violence that might change their mind. Wow. So her messenger becomes a, an instrument to gather opinions and to educate her supporters. And after she sends out a few of these broadcasts, she will know exactly who are her most engaged supporters. And this will allow her to do things like, hey, Mania Chat, give me my most engaged subscribers living in San Francisco and invite them to be volunteers on my next San Francisco rally. Now, thank you. Now, if a person replies yes, they are taken through a brief form right inside the messenger. And now she knows exactly how many people will be volunteering tomorrow. And all of that done only with Messenger and ManyChat. Yeah. So at ManyChat, we believe that audience engagement through messaging apps enables us to make it much more interactive and relevant. And today, I'm happy to announce ManyChat Pro, our first paid plan that will enable businesses and professionals to create white label bots with automated sequences of messages, tagging, sequences, uh, segmenting, and much more. Our plans start at $10 a month for 500 bot subscribers and scale as you grow your audience. And for all guests of Mobile Beat, we have a 50% discount for the first six months. So if you're interested, come find us after the session to get it. Thank you. All right, Mikhail. Mikhail, did I say your name right or did I say it wrong? 
Okay, good. I don't owe you a nickel. Great. All right. Next up, we have Swapnil Shindy, CEO of Mezzi, and somebody who looks a lot like him, uh, Snehal Shindy, CTO of Mezzi. Hey, guys. Hi, guys. Nice to meet you all. As you can see, we are identical twin brothers. <laughs> So guys, with Mezzi, we are giving everyone a personal assistant for shopping and travel. And behind the scenes, we are blending artificial intelligence and commerce to help you make purchase decisions and complete them on your behalf. So let's quickly check how Mezzi works. This is an example of me and Snehal booking our flights through Mezzi. And I actually did this while taking a walk. A couple of weeks ago, when we were going to New York, I sent a message to Mezzi saying that, can you find a flight for two people uh, to New York from Sunday, returning back on Wednesday? Since Mezzi knew that I always take a flight from SFO, it, uh, Mezzi wanted to confirm that and ask me for my time preferences. I said, yes, it's SFO. And I would prefer a flight that's a red eye on Sunday night and coming back Wednesday afternoon sometime between 3 and 6 PM. As you can see, Mezzi understood that and came back with, uh, with a question that would I prefer an economy or business. I said that I would love business so that I can sleep during the red eye. So as I'm talking to Mezzi, Mezzi is creating a real-time profile for me and keeping track of all my preferences. In this case, Mezzi said that please give me a few minutes so that I can come back with recommendations. Now what happens next is Mezzi will actually give me three options for the flights. One is the cheapest. One is the fastest, and one is, one is the best value. As a customer, I can quickly review these options, and I can click the Book It button. Mezzi will remember my payment options, my email. I can just select the travelers that are traveling for that day, click Done. And then I can just click Confirm, and I'm done. So what has happened behind the scenes is Mezzi went ahead and completed the, the, the flight booking for me. And Mezzi knew that I typically take aisle seats, so it booked aisle seat for both me and Snehal. Now, this is an example where Mezzi actually took care of my flight booking, but this is just the start. Mezzi is also really great at post-purchase experience. So a day before, uh, 24 hours before my flight, while I was watching Game of Thrones and Snehal was working hard, I actually got a push notification from Mezzi saying that both of us were checked in, and Mezzi also sent us our boarding passes. So this is an example of how Mezzi will simplify your post-purchase experience. Now, this request that we saw was for flight booking, and it was human-assisted. Around 40% of those messages that were seen on the screen were powered by machines, and 60% were humans. What we are announcing today is something very special and phenomenal. We actually believe that we have created the most advanced hotel assistant and chatbot in the industry today, something that really understands natural languages spoken by humans, can respond to it like humans, and can handle the complete ho hotel booking end to end, completely driven by artificial intelligence, natural language processing, deep learning, and machine learning. So Snail will actually take you through a live demo right now. So fingers crossed. Can we switch to the phone? iPhone. So as you can see, Snell sent a request to Mezzi, telling Mezzi in a very natural way that I'm visiting New York from July 20 to 22. And I would like a five-star hotel that is walking distance from the World Trade Center. Mezzi immediately passed the request and asked Snell if he if he had any special preferences for the hotel that we are looking for. Snell said that he would like a fitness center and a pool. So what's happening here is that Mezzi is, is trying to understand the real conversation. It detected that Snell wants a hotel that is walking distance from the World Trade Center, so that's the location. The city is New York. The dates are July 20 to 22. And the, fi the hotel is a five-star hotel. And the preferences that he's looking for are fitness center and pool. Now what happens behind the scenes after this is that Mezzi will actually index several different merchants in real time, pull down hundreds and thousands of flight recommendations from the merchants, segment that, uh, them by preferences that Mezzi has just learned, also segment it by preferences that 
Messi knows about Snell over a period of time, and then only pick three options that are highly personalized for this particular request and send it back to Snell. Now, this, this was an example where we were traveling to New York, but in addition to this, Mezi is capable of handling really complex requests, such as, let's say, uh, Snell wants to go to Hawaii. So the request to Mezi can be, Mezi, can you find me a five-star resort that is on the beach in Kona from next Tuesday to Friday for me, my wife, and a kid? It would be great if the hotel has access to a fitness center, is pet-friendly, and has a spa. So Mezi will understand this entire message and get back with options in close to around 60 seconds. So as you can see here, Mezi has come back with three really good options. The first option is actually a five-star hotel. You can dive deeper into it and read a lot more regarding the amenities and everything for that particular hotel. You can look at all the engaging pictures. You can circle through them. In this case, the Ritz-Carlton, a five-star hotel is for $460 a night. Snell likes it, though I don't know if board will approve it. <laughs> so you can just go ahead, click the traveler, click confirm, and done. So this is entirely handled by machines on the back end. And now we should actually see a message coming from our payments bot telling Snehal that, that perfect, I'm working on your flight, on your hotel booking right now, and it will be charged to your card in ending in so and so. And the next message, you will see that we actually spoke, uh, we actually connected to our hotel merchant. We did the entire booking, and the entire thing was completed end to end. So this whole flow here was driven by artificial intelligence, deep learning, and natural language understanding. There was no human involved. To actually create this bot, we, we used conversations which were across thousands of users in the last one year, and that's how we were able to achieve this particular uh, hotel bot demo. So just one more slide. We'll, okay. we'll go back to One the deck. More. So this is this is how our expert assistants CRM looks like. It's like a Tesla experience. They are sitting in a car that is driving the, uh, driving itself, and they can just be there when something fails, and then t teach the AI so that next time it doesn't fail. And Mezi will handle a lot more things apart from flights and hotels, like ticket, fashion, gifts, and a lot more things. And we are in the App Store. Feel free to download us as a special uh, as a special deal for all of you guys. If you use the mobile, if, if you use the code Mobile Beat and just give it to Mezi, you will actually get 10% off on your next, next hotel booking. So try us out when you get a chance. Thank you. Nice job, guys. Okay, now. Uh, an AI breakthrough is about to be launched by, and he asked me to introduce him this way, Vib. That's it. Vib. Did I do it right? Do I owe you a nickel? All right. So imagine, for all the progress AI has made, there's one problem that's fundamentally unsolved. It's called natural language understanding, or NLU. The problem is, without NLU, you cannot have a meaningful conversation with a machine. It's just matching commands and keywords. Google even calls this the holy grail because they haven't solved it. So, but machine and deep learning is going to solve all of this, right? Deep learning alone will never solve natural language understanding and being able to have a conversation with a machine. It will never even be able to beat a three-year-old in NLU. Now, what? How, why is that? Because you cannot learn what you cannot represent. Human language is infinitely more complex than a Go or a chess game. But Google's Parsi McParse face can do it, right? It only parses to grammar. It doesn't help you with meaning. And it cannot even answer the simplest bloody questions. How about? 
IBM Watson, with access to a vast amount of data, it could not even understand the Jeopardy question. How about Viv, Hound? It's mostly all statistics stuck in NLP. So luminaries like Andrew Ung from Baidu, you got uh, Jan Lecun from Facebook, they have said to solve NLU, we need to develop new paradigms. So are you ready for a radical AI breakthrough? Yes. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. All right, so today, I'm pleased to announce Pet Inc. is coming out of stealth. And we have many professors that claim we have made the biggest breakthrough in natural language understanding. So machines will be able to have a meaningful conversation only if you can match the meaning to a word correctly based on the other words in the sentence, just like a three-year-old does, without guesswork. Well, Pat made that breakthrough scalable. I'm going to close by saying that uh, today, the product we're launching is an API in private beta that is going to power AI, the AI apps of the future. And we're bootstrapped with $2.5 million. And we're now seeking our next round to change the AI landscape forever. Thank you very much. And we have a, a table upstairs if you want to see the live demo. Thank you. All right, heading upstairs for sure. Thank you, Viva. Next up. We have Katie McMahon, VP and General Manager of SoundHound. Thank you. Well, that's gotten interesting. It's got me fired up to be here to close out these lightning rounds. Um, great. So background, SoundHound Inc. for 10 years has been working in stealth mode on the most transformative new technology that intertwines voice recognition, NLP, NLU, AI, and scalability. Thank you. And we've designed something called speech to meaning. And I'll showcase it as well as explaining the speech to meaning, the value that we've got is multi multifold. We've got the ability to compound complex queries, the ability to follow up on those queries. The premise is that we want everyone to speak naturally. And this is absolutely crux for the scalability of a future in which we will talk to the IoT. So either at this very moment, we decide as individual companies in an industry that we want to create a future that is all robotic, to which you have to learn certain phraseology and speak keyword base in order for the stuff to work, which is how we have known of voice interfaces today. But I think we all want and envision a future where we really truly speak naturally, just like you're listening to me right now, you're understanding what I'm saying, you're not transcribing it and then computing it into understanding. And you're able to handle when I do a double, uh, 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 a negative, for ex example. Or the Hound app we released is a voice search and assistant app. Let me dive into the demo of that. What time is it in Auckland, New Zealand, when it's 2 p.m. here? Okay, let me get audio on that, guys. Okay, Hound, what's the wind speed by the Golden Gate Bridge tonight at 6 p.m.? Okay. 
Am I doing anything wrong to get audio because it's a wonderful experience? Can I turn off your phone? Phone is completely turned up. Okay. This piece. What time? What time will the sun rise the day before Christmas in Moscow, Russia, 2027? Feel free to come up, AV assistants. Thank you. <laughs> yes, help Katie out. Thank you. You will all remember this moment if you haven't been introduced to Hound, and you'll get over the fact that we're having a little quabble because I try. I, I, it's almost like if you can remember the first person that got you onto Netscape. This yes. is my friend, and I'm supposed to be your friend to show you about this transformative experience. May I please have one minute added to the clock? Yes. Thank you. Here we go. Show me hotels in Seattle with availability tomorrow night, less than $200 that are pet friendly with free Wi-Fi and has a gym. Yay. Hold on, I, 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 thank you. Let's, let's get a little more specific. Only show those that are one mile from the Space Needle. I can keep drilling down. Once you really know what you want to get, you can be very specific. Please show me coffee shops nearby that are open after 9 p.m. tonight, except for Starbucks. <laughs> That's great. Can I ask everyone to go off your Wi-Fi, please? <laughs> like this, is, know, right? this, this is lightning fast when you use this in real world. Show me restaurants nearby that are Asian, excluding Chinese and Japanese, that are open after 8 p.m. on Sunday. Okay. Let's flip back to the slides. All the queries that I'm doing are, are live and actual. So download Hound, you can hammer away. When I say, show me coffee shops that are open after 8 p.m. on a Sunday, and it, it will show me, and I can continue to drill down. If I just ask for that restaurant query and be very specific, throwing in um, the qualifiers, right? If you're asking any of your major embedded solutions to show me a restaurant except Chinese, they might be thinking, restaurant Chinese, that's what you want. And in fact, that's not what you want. So what SoundHound has done that's incredibly special is we've combined voice recognition and NLU into a single engine. We call that speech to meaning. The reason that's very important for you to understand is the impact going forward is we believe everything can be houndified. We've created a platform whereby any developer can put a natural language conversational voice interface onto your product, whether that's your app or your robot. Every major automotive um, car manufacturer is looking to houndify their experience because they can customize. When you sit inside a, a car that is of a brand X, that experience ought to be customized by that brand. And we don't have an agenda. We want you to enable those voice interfaces for your own experiences because ultimately you're the one that knows your product, your experience, and to be able to put a voice interface on it is so hard to do unless you're going to find the rare talents of PhDs in these deep sciences and spend nearly eight, 10 years to develop technology, then to be able to productize it, you might be getting somewhere. But this stuff is incredibly hard, and we're really proud to be the only private company that has voice recognition, the NLP, the scalability with interoperable domains live today. As an open platform, developers can go in there for free and start playing around with it. Um, Samsung, who obviously sees the future of the IoT, has chosen Houndify to be their partner on the Arctic IoT platform. And um, we've got several major companies uh, and brands working with over 10,000 developers already on it. So as you think about the future and bots, I, I don't want to rain on the parade of bots because I do believe people are making really niche, exciting things, but I do 
caution you to not build something that ultimately be throwaway work. Build something of consequence and meaning whereby you're unleashing humans to look up again and speak just normally and naturally and contextually. Um, and that's going to be the future. So let's say no to a robotic keyword, keyword based future. We praise the Amazon Echo for it being the first truly screenless device that forces you, not with the handicap of looking at a screen, but forces you to speak to it. However, we think it's failing is its architecture to have to force skill set learning phraseology. We would welcome and love the opportunity, in essence, to houndify an echo, to houndify Siri, and just be able to ha have the scalability and interoperability behind these domains. Even for example, can I even try one more time? When you download Hound, please test even the mortgage calculator. That's an example of conversational. If I say, what's the monthly mortgage on a million dollar house? It's not enough information. Hound will say, OK, well, what's the down payment? What's the period? What's the interest rate? And then once you feed all that information, you can flip it and say, OK, how about for an $800,000 house? How about for a $5 million house? And it's remembering that contextually. Even if I had asked on my hotel search, show me hotels in Manhattan, one mile from uh, Central Park, that are less than $400, pet friendly, have a gym and, a, and free Wi-Fi, everything comes up. What's the weather there? The weather in Manhattan is blah, blah. OK, don't show me anything that doesn't have Air conditioning, a double negative back in the other domain, and we, we've done it. Those of you who know this space and its com complications will be blown away by that level of um, abilities in, in the technology platform. So again, really to wrap up on what the Houndify platform means, these are the data points, right? It's voice recognition, NLP combined. So truly, this is the first time you're ever hearing of speech to meaning. From this moment on, everything else is old and rusty. And I, and I mean that with the greatest deference to enormous giant companies that are profoundly important to us. We're leapfrogging now for your experience to be truly natural and conversational. So thank you very much for your time. I really apologize. I couldn't give you a, a whiz-bang, unbelievable demo. But I do ask you to download and, and check it so out. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you. And next up. My good buddy, we've become friends, Artie Merritt, CEO, Dashbot.io. Hi, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Artie Merritt, one of the co-founders of Dashbot. Uh, along with, I have two other co-founders, uh, Jesse Hell and Dennis Yang, who some of them are out here. Is there a clicker? This? Oh, cool. So the green button, right? Uh, so Dashbot is a bot analytics platform. So we really believe that conversational UI, UX is the future, and that the data around uh, uh, conversational bots is much richer and more actionable than traditional web and mobile. First, you get audio, images, and locations. But more importantly, you get users' own voices. They tell you what they want from your bot, and they also tell you what they don't like about your bot. And it's often in pretty unpleasant terms. This leads to some pretty interesting opportunities for real-time decision making. So you can take action on this data. For instance, you could use it for AI response effectiveness and to improve that. You can do live person takeover, which we'll show you in a second. You can also do uh, push notifications for re-engagement based on the audience segmentation. So the issue is the traditional analytics tools just don't work well for bots. The tracking mechanisms are different. The data collected is different. And the processing is different. A good example is Slack. In Slack, you can have multi-user sessions. So multiple users can interact with your bot at the same time in the channel. So you need to be able to handle that. And that leads to some pretty interesting bot-specific metrics. So we have all the core metrics, engagement, uh, retention, users, all that kind of stuff. But we also have bot-specific metrics and bot-specific processing. So this is an example of user sessions in Slack. And so you can see it's, here you can have multiple users, more users than you actually have sessions. Slack also has the concept of teams. So these are the companies that installed your bot. So not only can you see who, who's using it, what teams are using it, the frequency of their use, but you can drill into these teams, and then all your metrics are based on, on, on that team. This is a sentiment analysis chart. This is for a trivia game that, that's on our platform. And it skews pretty negative. Uh, often the people are swearing when they don't know the answers to questions. But the interesting thing is they keep coming back and playing, so they, they're still highly engaged. 
this is uh, one of our uh, metrics around messaging. So you can see the messages in and out, and it gives you an idea of the activity level of your bot. But what's a little bit more interesting is to see the funnel uh, through your bot, the flow through the bot, how users are interacting, what they're typing in, and what's coming out. And this is really useful for improving your AI response effectiveness. So you can look at the message that, that came in, what happened, did your bot respond to these messages well enough, and what were the responses, and go back and improve that. We also have all the live session transcripts. So we save the transcripts. You can see how users interacted with your bot. If, the, if there's a live session going on, you see it in real time updating. And we support all the, the rich media around bots. So there's the location, there's Giphy's, there's audio. And when you think of things like sentiment, if someone sends a thumbs up, so earlier today someone was sending the thumbs up, that's not just an image. That actually means something. And that, that factors into the sentiment. But what we're excited to show today is this live person takeover. And this enables you to insert a person into a session when the session is going sideways, when something's going wrong. So you can insert the person in and hopefully improve the engagement and lead to a conversion. So we have a, a brief little video here of it. There's a live session going on right now. And if we click in, we can see the in user interacting with the bot. And we scroll down here, we see it li updating live. And in this case, the user appears to be looking for different types of restaurants, even though this is a bot meant to help you find other bots. So they're probably getting frustrated. And you can see here they even wrote, this is stupid. So let's see if we can try to help them out here. So I'm going to say, try typing restaurant. And let's see if that helps them. So that message is going to go out as if it was the bot sending it itself. So now let's see if, if that helped the user. So in this case, it did. They typed in restaurant, which leads to a conversion. And you can imagine in cases of travel bots, karma spots, or anything along those lines, that live person injection can improve the user experience, which leads to conversions, monetization, as well as increased user engagement. And you can learn more about live person injection, as well as Dashbot itself, and sign up for free at dashbot.io. Thank you. So th th there was a little blurry, but it, we can show you, if, if any of you guys are around and want to see live demos, we have uh, the video of this, and we're happy to uh, do demos for you. But basically, it's, it allows a person to come in, uh, take over the bot, and send messages to improve engagement and hopefully lead to a conversion. So I appreciate your time. Uh, be around, and Dennis is around as well if you guys want to talk. Thanks. Thanks, Artie. Vive. Vive. We want to give you another go. Come on. I know you took your mic off, but you're mighty. Like this one. All right, good. All right, so I want to take the opportunity to show you what NLU really is and, and what you cannot do on any bot today and, and will not be able to do with deep learning in the future. So please make my day. And <laughs> NLP solutions fail. They don't understand the meaning of the words in context. Let's start with a simple everyday conversation with a bot. Call Beth. No, actually John. Who was called? It was John. Pat simply replaces Beth with John because it understands. And here's a highly complex example, the famous Winograd test. The councillors didn't give a permit to the demonstrators because they advocated violence. Who advocated violence? The demonstrators. This is NLU and the reason everything will now change. Pat solved it because our system is scalable with a minimal number of links that avoids a combinatorial explosion. We use a neural net to make the linguistic RRG model scalable to parse text straight to meaning. Pat matches every word to the correct meaning based on the meanings of the other words in the sentence, just like a three-year-old does, and without guesswork. All right, thank you. All right, Vib. Excellent, excellent. Shiny new bots. <laughs>